All right, everyone, thanks again for coming on to tonight's um, session. And uh, we'll be looking at Wedding Field Hoffman Scholarships and Leadership Program um, on today's webinar. So I will be following the presentation in this order. We will have um, a little bit of understanding about the Weddenfeld Hoffman Trusts. Um, what, is it, what is it all about? And then we will now dive in into the scholarship program itself. Then we'll look at how you can apply for this program. And then we'll look at what you will need to apply for the program. Okay, so for those who don't know me, my name is Ape Omede, and uh, I am a Marie Curie postdoctoral fellow with um, an organization called Chagask in Ireland. And I'm currently spending um, a research fellowship um, time at um, a university in Spain called the University of Lyon. Um, I've successfully held uh, several um, grants and scholarships uh, and awards um, up to up to the tune of four hundred thousand dollars, and I'm just drawing from my experience to share with you um, uh, on this webinar, like I've been doing in the previous ones. So this webinar is organized by the Scholarship Mastery Academy, which is the platform I started to help students become fit and ready for scholarships because. Um, there are a lot of people who are out there who are interested in scholarship, but um, they, they don't really know what it takes to go through applying for one and be successful in it. And um, so at our Scholarship Master Academy, the objective is to make students fit and ready for scholarship. And we, we do that through webinars like this, um, sharing of opportunities, different scholarship opportunities. So we run an online course and we also do a coaching and mentoring program. So that's all about Scholarship Mastery Academy. Let's go into today's discussion, which is Widenfield Hoffman Scholarships and Leadership Program. And so I, do, I actually just came up about this program um, last week. I've not really heard about it before last week. And I decided to you know, get to know a little bit more about it. And I started reading about it and I saw that it's actually a very, very good program. Um, and I thought maybe I should just um, explore it and share it with the community. And so that's why I am discussing this to, with us today. And I feel it's a very good one for anybody who is listening or is on the show, on the show tonight um, who, and eligible to make an attempt to it. So let's start with the Wedding Food Hoffman um, Trust, what it's all about. Okay, so this trust is an educational charity that was set up by, um, he's dead now, or he's late now, um, a man called Lord Weddingfield, and uh, in collaboration with the current chairman of the, of the organization called Andre Hoffman. That's how the name came together, Weddingfield and Hoffman. So these two guys came together to um, you know, start this particular organization which is now an educational um, uh, charity trust or organization. And so this is Lord Wedingfield, who is um, actually who used to be a member of the House of, House of Lords in, in UK and was a, a renowned publisher and also a philanthropist. Uh, unfortunately, he's late now, died about um, four years ago. And this is Andrew Hoffman, who is... Um, Currently, the vice chairman of Roach. Roach is a Roach or Roche. I don't know the exact pronunciation, but this is Roche is a, is a pharmaceutical company, um, and this man happens to be the uh, vice chance, uh, vice chairman of the of the company. And so the company is or the organization is um, is being run currently by uh, Andrew Hoffman, who is the major benefactor along with other other. Um, regular donors to the trust. So uh, I was established in 2015 um, from multiple donors with funds from multiple, multiple donors as part of the celebration of um, Lord Weddingfield's uh, 95th birthday. So what is this program, this scholarship program all about? Mm -hmm. So in the trust, there are two scholarship programs that are currently um, being offered. The first one is the Oxford Wedding Field Hoffman Scholarship and Leadership Program, which is uh, a collaboration between Oxford University and, uh, and the Trust. 
And the second program is uh, is is a collaboration with Chevening, Chevening um, in uh, uh, which is part of uh, the British government uh, scholarship program. So uh, we may remember that the Chevening scholarship ended uh, on the third of um, of this month, November, and uh, and one of the programs that work was uh, available for people to apply to was this particular one in collaboration with uh, Weldon Feld um, Hoffman. So, but today our focus is going to be on the Oxford um, Scholarship Program. So the Oxford Wedding Field Hoffman Program is, uh, like I said, it's a trust that provides about 30 graduate scholarships every year. About 30 graduate, graduate scholarships every year to young people from developing and emerging countries to study at Oxford. So this is uh, a huge opportunity for someone to go to Oxford University and study. And interestingly, 30 scholarships are given out by these guys every year. That's a good number for an individual organization to be given up to 30 scholarships every year. It's a, um, it's a, it's a very great one. And it's, it's target is young people from developing and emerging countries of the world. Uh, interestingly, this is the largest philanthropic scholarship that is supported by the University of um, Oxford. Um, and I'm not sure how, how big Bill, Bill and Melinda Gates scholarship is at um, Cambridge, and I don't know if they exist in, uh, at Oxford University, but it's, it's interesting to really know that this is the largest philanthropic scholarship in the University of Oxford. And the program allows uh, participants to, to, to engage in leadership program, a, a, a well-crafted, specially crafted, developed leadership program, which gives them the opportunity to pick up some leadership tools and, and, and learn from them. And so they can return back to their country and um, put to use whatever it is that they have learned in any area of um, work that they are engaged or involved in. So what is the goal of the program? Basically, the program is looking at raising leaders who, who will be able to address um, current and future global challenges, uh, particularly those that are affecting um, you know, uh, growing or developing um, countries and uh, economy that are still emerging and transiting from probably, probably a, 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 a very lower economy to um, a higher one that is able to impact its citizens and stuff like that. So the target of the program is to help build leaders who will be able to, you know, contribute to their, their country's economy and um, leadership and uh, tackle challenges globally and, you know, nationally and provide appropriate solutions um, to them. So who is an ideal candidate for this program? Now, this is not just a, a scholarship program that is, um, this is not just a scholarship program that is only focused on um, you know, academic records, academic, academic excellence only. It is a full-fledged leadership program as well. So it is um, a more or less um, a scholarship program that is targeted at building leadership, um, and not just looking at your academic um, records. Secondly, it is looking for people who have strong ambition, you know, for leadership and are from developing countries. People who are also willing to take whatever they have learned back to their country and create a change. So if you're someone who is in this category, then this is um, a good opportunity for you to, to try to explore. So this scholarship is a full-time master's or M-field scholarship program at Oxford. Uh, I think there are a few um, first degree programs also that are eligible for the scholarship, but most of them are, are for master's, and most of them are master's and M-field programs. Um, I'm not sure there is any PhD program that is available in the program, in the scholarship program. Um, so the, the, the scholarship gives the opportunity to be involved in the leadership program of, of the, of the scholar of, yeah, leadership program of the program, <laughs> if I have to say it that way. Uh, so they have a very good leadership activity that is involved, um, in the scholarship program. Um, but then you must return back to your country by the end of the, of your studies. 
So what do you stand to gain or to benefit from the scholarship? So the scholarship will cover 100% of your university and college fees and also gives a grant of uh, about 15,258 pounds, 285 pounds uh, to cover your living costs and living expenses. And also remember that all the, all the activities in the leadership program is also covered by the scholarship, but then majorly your school fees is covered completely. And then you also have about 15,000 um, pounds to cover your living expenses during the period of your study. The um, awards are made for the full duration of your fee liability for the agreed cost. So the, the fee covers the length of your study program. So if you're applying for a one year program, the, the fees will cover just for one year. If you're applying for two years program, it will cover for um, the period that you're studying. Now, how do you apply for this program? So to apply for this program, you will first of all need to apply for one of the master's program that is eligible for the scholarship at Oxford University. Um, that's uh, what is required. You need to apply for one of the master or one of the programs, one of the courses that are available under this program at the University of Oxford. And then when that is done, you will need to fill out the, the Welding field Hoffman application form. So they have their own application form, different from your master's program application uh, application at Oxford University. But what happens is that when you are uh, about when you are submitting your master's application um, at Oxford, you will now submit this particular form alongside with your uh, master's or MPhil admission application at Oxford. And it is important to note that the 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 requirement to get this particular scholarship is, is an offer to the course you are applying to at Oxford. So the scholarship is dependent on you being able to secure admission at Oxford University. So it's not just um, automatic or it's not, it's not a separate um, consideration. The consideration is alongside with the application for admission um, at Oxford University. So selection criteria for this particular program. Uh, if you, there are a lot of countries that are actually eligible, um, of, of which Nigeria and many African countries um, are included. Uh, but you must be a, come, be a citizen of one of those countries that are listed. And you must be applying to um, an eligible course at Oxford University. And it's available at the website. The, the list of the countries and the list of the courses are available on the website. Um, I have a list of the, of the courses which I will, I will show to you as we, as we continue. Um, the second criteria is uh, motivation and purpose. You, have, you must be able to explain the relevance of your proposed course of study to your future professional objectives. So you need to understand what your career goals are and how the course you're about to choose or you're about to go into will support you to achieve uh, yeah, that career goal. So, your ability to explain what is your motivation and you know for going for the course and what is your purpose in life, what is your career goal, um, what is your professional objective for the next five years or six years or ten years, and you know this distilling it distilling it clearly for the um, uh, reviewers to be able to understand you and uh, see reason in what you are doing is one of the major criteria. Secondly, uh, there is need for you to show leadership potential. So you should be able to describe your leadership skills with particular relevance to your ability to communicate and your ability to, to exhibit interpersonal relationship. And attitude for strategic thinking is important and then, te and then teamwork. So are you someone who is able to communicate your leadership goals very well or organizational goals very well? Are you able to interact with people in your team effectively? Um, are you able to think strategically? Do you have communication skills in terms of uh, relating with people or making presentations, writing, and all that? So um, these things will be assessed as part of your leadership potentials in the process of your application. Then, um, uh, of course, academic excellence is included, but interestingly, it's not the first, it's not the second, and it's not the third. So this. 
uh, this shows that the the weight of the of this particular program is on the leadership aspect of it much more than on academic excellence but then they require some level of academic excellence which you can show using any of these things you can use your degree results to show your academic excellence uh, or to meet the requirement of ac academic excellence you can use your uh, individual marks on your transcript information on the students of our position within a cohort so say in your in your year you came uh, the fifth best student in your level or something like that you can use that academic references academic references can be used to indicate or show academic excellence so if you have a very good supervisor who understands your potential even if you didn't graduate best in your class but he understands or she understands your academic potential and knows that if you have opportunity you could excel in this aspect of of work and all that so that academic references can be useful as well and then if you have publications that can also be used to gauge or to measure your academic excellence especially if you are applying for a course um, that requires research uh, as part of its component and then you you one of the uh, last criteria is that you have to be committed to the program because of the leadership program you you i mean the leadership program requires you to um be fully committed to it in fact is a is a mandatory aspect of this of the scholarship the leadership program is a mandatory aspect of this class so you must be able to indicate or show during the process of your application that you can commit to the leadership program the leadership program has some core pro core units or, or mandatory modules that you must participate in so um, if you're not able to show commitment to those programs and in, in the process of application it will be very difficult for you to um, to be able to scale through so number one you must come from an eligible country of which i mentioned that most of african countries are eligible you must be you know applying to a particular course that is um, eligible for this particular program which i said i will show you the list um, before we finish today then your motivation and purpose your leadership potential your academic excellence and then commitment to the program now as part of your application when you're filling the wedding field hoffman's application form there are essay questions that you need to um, respond to uh, you know uh, as part of your application and uh, i just uh, brought them out to share with you so um and you have to respond to them in not more than 200 words you have a maximum of 200 words to respond to each of the questions that are asked on the application form so these are the questions the first one is why do you want to participate in the in the program why do you want to participate in the program what value do you see in your moral moral philosophy uh, program and uh, uh, enterprise challenge why do you want to participate in the weatherfield hoffman trust leadership program what value do you see in our in our moral philosophy program and enterprise challenge so that means you have to go to uh, their website and read about their moral philosophy program and their enterprise challenge and then you draw the value you can see from it and use it to express yourself in that particular uh, question then the second question is how can one individual make a difference you as a person how do you think you can make a difference as one person? They want you to be able to explain that in 200 words. Uh, number three, how have you, have you ever mobilized a group to achieve a common goal? Have you ever mobilized a group to achieve a common goal? If it is yes, how do you do it? And uh, I'd like to tell you that this, this does not mean that you have to have a million people following you. To be able to answer that question it doesn't mean that you have to have one million people or ten thousand people following you have you led have you led a a a, a group to achieve anything before have you led a campaign have you mobilized even in something as little as in your class maybe you are you were a cost rep or even maybe you were not even a cost rep but you were one of the people who move, who make things move in your department during your school days. You were able to move students together in your class to achieve certain goals. That is something. That is something. So you have to be able to think critically 
And that doesn't mean you have to think of big things or think of people who have become SUG president or have led one big thing or the other before you can answer that question. So long as you've been able to mobilize more than one person to achieve a goal, you should be able to express yourself in that as, as aspect and describe how you, 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 know, you did that. And then the fourth question is, what is the challenge facing your country that you really want to help to solve? What is the challenge facing your country that you really want to help to solve? Do you see any, any problem or any challenge in your country that you feel that you, you have what it takes to solve or you are passionate about to solve? And can you explain that in 200 words? So these are the four questions that you must respond to in, in the application form. There are other questions there that um, are, are quite easy to respond to, but the core of the application is uh, based on these four questions. So what will you need? What will you need? So the, the, the required document depends on the course that you are applying to. Um, because each, each of the courses on, on the website has its own um, required documents and all that. But it generally, you may need about uh, seven, seven documents that um, I'm going to show to you. Uh, so those first seven, there are eight documents I'll be showing. Seven of them are specifically for the admission. Um, and it could vary based on which of the courses that you're applying to. So the first one is your official transcript. You will need your official transcript to be able to apply for, for this. Uh, you need either your CV or a resume. Um, and this is something I taught the guys who are doing the scholarship mastery challenge a few days ago, uh, the difference between your CV and your resume. So um, a, one, of the course, one of the courses may be asking for, the C, for a CV while the other may be asking for a resume. So having an understanding of what is the difference between the two of them is very, very important. And um, yeah, so you need to get it ready. Uh, number three, you need to have your statement of purpose and uh, or your personal statement. And interestingly, also we have learned about statement uh, a personal statement in the scholarship success challenge. So, I guess those of them who are here will understand what that is and know how to write it. But yes, you need a statement of purpose or a personal statement of not more than five thousand words, one thousand words, and not less than five hundred words. Uh, written work or research proposal. Again, it, look, it looks like everything that they're asking for are things we've, uh, we've um, dealt with in the scholarship success challenge. You need a research proposal or a written work. So a research proposal, if you are going for a research-based work or a, a, a course that has a component of research, and then a written work, if you're going for um, uh, a non-research-based um, um, course and uh, it, 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 the word, word limit is between 2,000, minimum of 2,000 and a maximum of 4,000 words. You may require a GRE and again this depends on the course that you're applying to and um, I said all the courses have their um, individual specific requirements. So, so this is more or less like a general uh, requirements of all that may be needed. Um, so uh, if you if you are applying and you you look at your course, you need to get what get to know what and what they're asking for to for you to submit. Um, but the GRE score may be a potential requirement. And then reference letters are also required. I think um, about three three reference letters or something like that. Uh, and then you now uh, need to also include the field scholarship application form, so, uh, which, you, which is a separate document on its own. So you need your transcript, your CV or resume, you need a statement of purpose or personal statement, you need a written work or a research proposal, you may need a GRE, you need um, reference letters, um, uh, and then the application form itself. So here are the list of the eligible courses for this program. And uh, uh, let's look at it and see if um, any of them is relevant to you. Bachelor of Civil Law, Master of Business Administration, Magister Juris, Master of Public Administration and Policy, Ma uh, Master of African Studies, Master of Biodiversity, Conservation and Management, Master of Comparative Social Policy, Master of Computer Science, Contemporary Chinese Studies, the MPhil in Development Studies, 
um, diplomatic studies, economics for development, education, uh, comparative and international education, then education, a higher education op op um, option, energy systems, master of science in environmental change and management, evidence-based social intervention and policy evaluation, financial economics, master of international health and tropical medicine, um, Islamic studies and history, Jewish studies, Korean studies, Latin American studies, law and finance, mathematical modeling and scientific computing, master of, of uh, migration studies, modern Middle Eastern studies, modern South Asian studies, natural society and environmental governance, refugee and forced migration studies, social sciences of the internet, sustainability, enterprise and environment, water science, policy and management, global governance and diplomacy, and lastly, global health science. Very beautiful courses, very, very beautiful courses. So these are the courses that are eligible um, for this particular um, scholarship. So if your, um, your, your area of interest is listed, then I will encourage you to try to, to make an attempt and see if you can um, apply. I'm seeing someone saying uh, um, his area is Master of Global Health Science. So you can go for it if um, that works for you. All right, so what's the timeline for uh, this uh, program? So the deadline is between January and February, and this depends on the course that you're applying to. So the, the deadline is uh, basically the, the deadline, the last day that you're supposed to submit your application for that course. Remember, you're submitting your application alongside with the um, admission application. So any day that that admission application is closing is the day that um, your scholarship application is also closing. And uh, the closing dates vary between um, January to February for all the courses that we've listed. Then March to June, uh, so, uh, first step of uh, uh, processing will be done and successful people will be invited for interviews between March to June. And then the shortlisting of, uh, the, shortlisting of uh, the winners of the scholarship as well as the offer will be made between September and uh, October. Um, so between now and February, you need to make sure you submit your um, application if you're interested. Um, then you expect the result to be out by March or June, and then September to October, the results will be out completely. And uh, there is a tuition fee, I mean, sorry, there is an application fee to the courses at Oxford University, but some countries are eligible for a waiver of application fee and they are lower income countries, lower income countries. And uh, if you're from Nigeria, unfortunately you are not <laughs> in that category. Uh, so you have to pay an application fee. There are a few other countries that are in, in, in on the list. I can't remember them exactly at the moment. So I just wanted to mention that so that when you go there, you, you have it at the back of your mind that uh, yeah, that you have to pay a fee. All right, so that's where we, we uh, come to the end of uh, the presentation on Weddingfeld Hoffman Scholarships and Leadership Program that is tenable at Oxford um, University. So if you have any question, um, I'd like to, to have your questions now. So do we have any question in the chat? Let me just see. Okay, Mamo is saying that um, MSc in Global Health Science, yeah, so if you're eligible for that, you can go for Educate, Chuku, Eboha, Energy System, yes. As I said, Giovanni from Facebook said, my area is not there as I will keep looking forward to an opportunity. Well, yes, yeah, so I guess that um, it's not a static list. So I guess that there will be a kind of um, reshuffling every year uh, to 
to maybe update the list and all that. So you just have to keep checking um, to see that uh, maybe some someday, sometime in the future, your list, your your course will be listed in in the program. So does any, anybody have any question? I guess it's quite straightforward. So um, um, I don't know if anyone has any question. I'll just wait a little bit and see if anyone has any question. Uh, no, no question in the comments. Okay, so. Uh, are there recorded version of um, uh, recorded version of uh, Mastery Academy? I don't get it very well. Do you? You can you can unmute and uh, let me know what your question is. I'm not sure what the question is. Hey, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening, Ikechuku. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. And you? I'm fine. Um, the ongoing um November challenge, uh, I wasn't able to uh, enroll for it. So that's why I'm asking. I get a recorded version. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, so um, but the next batch will start on the 1st of December. So if uh, I, I was actually going to mention it as we continue, uh, the next batch will start on the 1st of December. And so if you want to join, you may want to wait until then. What I'm asking is that, like, presently, um, I'm, I'm not really as free as I used to be. So I just want to know if they are recorded. Right. Yes, yes, they are, they are all recorded. They are recorded. They are recorded videos, actually. They are video presentation, video teachings. All the, all the 30 days are, are going to be, we are currently on day 14 of the challenge, uh, and all of them are videos. Okay. So that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. All right, no problem. Let me take the next question. Um, uh, the next question is, uh, will they accept a second MSc? Is there a PhD program? So well, there, there is no PhD program um, for this. Will they accept the second MSc? This will depend on what Oxford University will tell you. You remember that the 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 everything boils down to you being able to be admitted to Oxford University. And if Oxford University doesn't care about you having a, a previous um, a first, a first master's, then I don't think it's going to be a problem. If you ask me from what I know, I feel that it shouldn't be a problem because now this program is a leadership program. It's, it's not just a scholarship program. It's a program that is focused on building leaders who will tackle serious um, 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 global um, challenges. So if uh, you, you feel that there is an area that you, you, you can provide a solution to and you want to apply for that particular program, I think you should uh, give, it, give it a go. Um, uh, I don't know if they will say no because you already have your master's. That will only be a clause in Oxford University's uh, program which I'm not sure if anything like that will ex exist because I didn't check. You can ask, uh, uh, we can discuss that later on if you're interested. Mamo, is, since you are part of the challenge, you can, we can discuss that and see if, if uh, it's possible or not, if you're interested in applying for this. Um, uh, although not completely related to this topic, can someone move can someone move from coursework in masters to research in PhD? Ah, oh. um, well, it may be possible if, if um, one, you have a component of um, 
thesis writing in your in your masters like maybe if you did a three months or six months um uh, coursework uh no not coursework uh, three months or six months um research maybe a little research that you were able to write a thesis on or write a report on uh, that could help you to move from masters to to phd by research and if I, it will also depend on the universities that you may you are you are thinking of going to. Uh, some of the universities may not care very much about your what you did in your masters, whether it is a coursework or research based. So long as you can show evidence of uh, understanding how research you know works. For example, are you able to craft a research proposal without any help or without any I mean, on your own, without too much of help or too much of support, you know, that if you're able to do that and present to the school, because definitely if you're going to apply for a PhD by research, you need something like that. And your research proposal is, is one of the ways to show that, OK, I can actually think critically and develop, uh, develop an idea into something that can be worked on. And so if you have that potential to do something like that, it could also work um, for you. And if you're doing a coursework master's, that also means you cannot publish. So if you're doing a coursework master's, you can also publish, but then you're not, you will not be able to publish um, uh, research-based documents. You, you will not be able to you know, publish research-based articles, but you will still be able to publish um, review-based articles. So you can do a review, you can do a meta-analysis, and you can also publish them. And if you're able to do that during your master's, even, even if it's a coursework master's, uh, your ability to publish is an indication that you can also do a research program in PhD. So these are the things that you may need to consider if you want to move from master's by coursework into a, a PhD by research program. Um, having a little component of your master's uh, uh, with um, some kind of research that you're going to report on to being able to craft a research proposal that is strong enough, even if your master's was not a research-based master's. And then thirdly, if you're able to publish review articles um, or meta-analysis during your master's program, all those things can help you to move from coursework master's to a PhD by research. Um, Godwin, your question is not related to today, today's class. Uh, okay, you can ask, you, you can ask, Let, let's see what it is about. Okay, so your question is applying for a co-fund program. The application link is taken to a school that I am not interested in. Is this normal? Um, if yes, in a column where the school is asking why I chose them, should I go ahead and talk about the school that I am interested in? Uh, okay, so you apply for a co-fund and the co-fund is taking you to a school that you're not interested in. Well, so, my question will be, why are you not interested in that school in the first instance? Especially if you're sure that you're going to get the fund. Uh, Godwin, you can unmute. You can unmute and, and uh, talk to me. Let me see why you're not interested in the school. Yeah, I am applying for um, a particular project, which is supposed to be um, held at the um, University of Kent. Mm -hmm. And the professor who gave me um, a go ahead to apply is also in the University of Kent. But then the link I'm applying to now is directing me to the University of uh, Southampton. So uh, though the University of Southampton, um, I, I think they have some some projects they also want to do that is advertised alongside the one I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. That is why I am not confused. Does it mean that um, I should talk about University of Kent in the University of um, South Pantin's website? Or should I? I don't just know how to go about it. Oh, okay. I get what you mean now. Okay, so the COFON, the COFON program is between Kent and Southampton, right? Yeah, and an industry. And an industry. Yes, sir. And then the link is sending it to University of Southampton. Yes, sir. 
and then they're asking you to discuss the uh, which of the university, the University of Southampton. Yeah, the University of Southampton is asking me to discuss why I chose them, of which I'm not using them. Uh, okay, so I think what is happening there is that University of South Southampton is the um, is the primary um, host of that particular co-fund program. University of Southampton is the primary investigator or the leader of that particular consortium. So that is why that is um, happening. Even though you are interested in Kent, but then the leader of that particular project is uh, Southampton, and I guess that's why the professor directed you to South Southampton to apply. So in this situation, there is nothing you can do. You are going to, you're go, if you eventually get it, you're going to move between Southampton and Kent, okay? You're going to move between the two of them. But then it looks like the, the people who are um, responsible for the admission process and all that would be University of Southampton. So there's nothing you can do other than to talk about South, <laughs> Southampton University. Um, because it looks to me that they are the primary um, host of that particular project. So you have to go back and look at Southampton and um, think about what will make you to like this school and then, and then write about it. Unless you just want to leave the opportunity completely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you have to write about Southampton because I think that's what is happening. If it's a co-fund project with an industry and Kent, and the link is sending you back to um, what is it called to Southampton, um, it means that your application has to go through Southampton. But if you get it, you eventually go to Kent and you eventually go to work with the industry as well for a while. So you have to base all your discussion around the primary university where you are submitting your application. All right, sir, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, any other question? Um, on Facebook, there is no question on Facebook. And I think I've done Sorry, if... If you're on the call, you can just mute your, your mic so that we don't... Um... Okay, so I think that's all for to today. Um, I'll round up and then we'll go into our family meeting for those who understand what I mean by family meeting. Um, because I can't see any other question here. So any other question, we'll take it during uh, that session. Okay, so um, even though admission to Scottish Master Academy is uh, closed, I mean, the full coaching and mentoring program uh, is closed. The online course is still on. And um, there are other services that are also available in terms of help giving you support to uh, uh, with your applications and stuff like that. So if you're interested in getting um, specialized support with any application that you're making, um, feel free to get in touch and they will, will be able to discuss that with you and see how we can help you. Um, but then the 30 Day Scholarship Success Challenge is still on. Uh, we are on day 14 today for those who joined in November. And from 1st of December to 30th of December, we will also um, run the challenge again and um, I'm very much excited about how the program is going. Uh, the guys who are on it are, uh, are feeling the heat or what it takes to, to win a scholarship but at the same time I am impressed with what the guys are doing. Uh, they are very much hard working and um, I'm looking forward to what will come out of it uh, by the end of November with um, those guys who are on the program now. And if you want to join for December you can sign up to using the link that is showing um, on your screen at the moment. Um, it is a, a daily presentation. And like I've mentioned in this particular talk today, we have done things on personal statement, we have done things on CV, we have done things on, on motivation letter, we have done things finding where to find scholarship, how to find scholarship. Some of the things we have been discussing also here on the webinars, but now it is a kind of a one-on-one -on -one activity 
where I have time to give tasks to everyone who is on the challenge and follow up on the task. Because you know that you can talk about applying for a scholarship from today till tomorrow, from today till next year, and you will never ever take an action. So the essence of this challenge is not just to teach, because I know I have taught almost all of these things in the, in, uh, in the previous uh, presentation. The major goal of this particular challenge is to push you, is to push you to take time. Oh, yeah, come, come, come and see. I want to go and eat now. Is to push you to, um, please, if you're on the, on the show, can you just mute your, mute your mics, please? Um, I'll appreciate that. So like I was saying, the essence is to, is to push you to take steps, to take actions. So every day there is a task um, on a particular thing. Like if we're discussing um, personal statement, your task will be to write a personal statement after showing you how to go about writing one. If it is a research proposal, your task will be to do a demo research proposal. It is, another task will be things like finding a demo a demo potential supervisor, not the supervisor you're going to apply to, you know, but a demo potential supervisor. Find one and share the link and everything. Find a link to International Student Scholarship and share in the group after showing you how to look for it and all that. And it's been amazing and interesting. Some of them have been able to pull out some some information from some places i'm not even sure i've you know come across another so if you really really want to push yourself then i mean join the scholarship success challenge for december starting on the first of december up until 30th of december and uh, if you want to join the link is https uh column forward double four slash um, bit dot ly forward slash 30 d s s c uh, if you're not able to uh, find the link, you can send a message to me on Facebook or using the number uh, on the screen to send me a WhatsApp uh, message and I'll be able to get back to you. So I'm looking forward to having you join for December. It's still late for you to join in November because we're all, all already halfway on the challenge. So you won't, be, you won't be able to meet up with the daily challenge. So just keep it and prepare for December and then use that to launch into 2021. Um, chasing all the opportunities that may come your way. Okay, so that's about 30 day scholarship success challenge. Um, but if you're not able to join the challenge and you're unable to uh, join the academy in any way, you are still able to receive free tips like this that we'll be doing um, as much as we can and on our social media platforms. We always share a few opportunities that um, we come across. For any other inquiries, you can send me an email at Scholarship Mastery Academy at Gmail or to my WhatsApp. And you can check out um, the website to see some of the things that we have to offer. All right, so thank you very much uh, for joining today. And uh, I hope that someone here will um, be able to, you know, look at, um, uh, take a look at the, the Welfenden, um, Welding Field Hoffman um, Scholarship and Leadership Program at Oxford and uh, maximize it. And um, I will see you next week. Next week, we're going to talk about, I think, um, Singapore International Graduate Awards or something like that. But surely, by the grace of God, we'll be back next week, Saturday, same time, 7 p.m. And um, I'll see you then.